When we look at quality grading, we'll find that there are quality grades for young animals and quality grades for older animals, particularly those we might call cows. Cows would go commercial, utility, cutter, and canner. Those are the quality grades for those particular animals. For the young animals, which we are more attuned to, because most of the feedlot animals are almost all going to be A maturity, 94% of the cattle are the very youngest maturity score, A maturity. That's 9 to 30 months of age. Those animals are in that category with probably about 6% in the B maturity, 4 to 6% in the B and maybe a few older. But almost all of our cattle are in the younger maturity grades. And those cattle for those grades are A, uh, for A maturity, are prime, choice, select, and standard. Well, how do we determine maturity, first of all? Well, a grader will stand on a grading chain in a packing plant and carcasses will pass by that grader at about the rate of one every 10 to 12 seconds. And so he's got to look at this carcass to determine a host of different factors that evaluate the quality grade and yield grade of the animal. For quality grade and maturity in particular, he's going to look at something very quickly that he can grasp a hold of to see the age of that animal. And if you notice this side that's next to me, this, this animal is split right down the middle and it exposes something called the backbone. Uh, the chine buttons on the backbone. That's the term that we use in the industry of these little white buttons. They're called chine buttons. And as an animal gets older, those white, soft cartilage tissue turn into bone. And so a grader can actually look and say, where does that ossification stop? Ossification is a process of cartilage turning into bone. And it actually starts from the round end and works its way all the way down to the forequarter, to the chuck. And so he can look and say, in these buttons, where does that ossification stop? And he can determine the age of the animal fairly closely. All of the animals that you're going to see later in the program are going to be A maturity. So we're really going to just concentrate on those younger animals, 9 to 30 months of age, which is about 94% of the population that is fed in the feedlots in the United States. So this animal is young, has white, soft cartilage at the end of the backbone, which we call chine buttons. Also, we look at the lean maturity when we look at the age of the animal. And as an animal gets older, the color goes from a bright cherry red color to a darker color. And this is a bright cherry red color, so this is a young, a maturity animal. Then the next factor that we look at for quality grade is marbling. And a grader will stand on the line, and uh, before he actually gets up on the chain, he'll take these cards out. These are official USDA marbling charts, and he'll take a look at them. And he basically can take a look and see, by looking at the chart, what is the minimum level of marbling for an animal that's A maturity that would grade choice. That's a small amount of marbling. And he has a picture here that says small zero. That would be the minimum amount of marbling that you can have and have an A maturity uh, carcass that would grade choice. There's another picture called slight, slight zero. That's the minimum amount of marbling for the select grade. And then there's another one called slightly abundant. And that's the minimum amount of marbling for the carcass that's A maturity to go into the prime grade. So he'll look at the flex of fat inside this muscle. This carcass has been separated between the 12th rib and the 13th rib. And it's exposed this rib by. And he'll evaluate the marbling that's in that picture to determine the final quality grade of that particular carcass. And this carcass has a slight amount of marbling. And therefore, A maturity, slight amount of marbling, it would go USDA select. Now, the grades, remember, are prime, choice, select, and standard. Standard are really what the industry is saying that we need to get rid of as far as an industry. They, have, they like to have more prime cattle, more cattle than the upper choice. They will have low choice cattle that go to the retail market, and there is still a significant amount of market, particularly on the West Coast, that would accept the select, and actually sometimes prefer the select product. But they say the U.S. standard is a product that we do not want. Now there's one factor in particular we want to talk about that does affect quality grade, and that is dark cutting beef. Dark cutting is when an animal goes under long-term stress before slaughter, depletes the glycogen, or we might refer to it as the muscle sugar, and causes that animal not to go into rigor mortis in a normal pattern, normal way, because it's already used all of its muscle sugar. And therefore, when that happens, the color of the meat actually uh, is a dark color. And it goes from any shade from a dark red color to almost a black color, uh, color, which we call black cutters. 
But a dark cutter is an animal that has gone under prolonged stress that may be due to weather changes, to mixing cattle and they're reestablishing their pecking order, uh, to really a host of other factors. That animal's temperament could be a factor. If that animal is high strung, then it could be more likely to be a dark cutter. Usually it's not one factor, it's a whole host of factors. When you add them up, up together, they end up causing this condition. There are about five or about three percent of the cattle in the U.S. that we found in the National Beef Quality Audit that would fit into this dark cutting category. Now the grade is affected by that. A grader will look at it and depending on the severity of the dark cutting, he will deduct one-third, two-thirds, or up to one full quality grade because that animal is a dark cutter. If it's a very dark brown color or black, then he'll deduct that quality grade by one full grade. So for instance, if this carcass, which we said was a select, and now let's add on to it, it's not this bright cherry red color, it's a dark color, uh, all very, very dark color with one full deduction, it's going to end up having a quality grade of USDA standard. So that's one way that dark cutting affects uh, the grading system. Dark cutters, to be, in reality, are not put in a boxed beef product. It's a discount a carcass that is shipped out as a carcass to somebody we might call a jobber that would take that, cut it, maybe use it in food service or send it over to uh, some sort of, uh, for foreign trade, some, particularly sometimes Mexico would accept that product out of the U.S. because it is discounted substantially.